welcome to Medical Dialogues. I'm Roshni Dhar. Let's look at today's top news. A medical professional has called the tomato fever a misleading colloquial name for hand, foot and mouth disease. Recently, the Lancet study revealed tomato fever flared in India among children. Tomato fever flared in India after children aged below 5 years got infected upon in contact with the virus. The rare viral infection is in an endemic state and it is considered non-life-threatening. However, because of the dreadful experience of the COVID-19 pandemic, vigilant management is desirable to prevent further outbreaks. Speaking to Medical Dialogues about the tomato fever, we have Dr. Raji Jayadevan, co-chairman of IMA's National Task Force on COVID-19. Welcome to Medical Dialogues, sir. Sir, if we talk about the virus, the tomato fever as the name it is, the general public is relating it with the tomatoes. So what is your say to break this myth? Yeah, the first thing we ought to know is that the, the whole world is tired and uh, of hearing about viruses continuously for two and a half years now. So I think we, we should be a little sympathetic to our general public. They are worried. Uh, partly because there are things they don't understand and uh, tragedies have happened. So whenever they hear something new, uh, with whatever name we call it, they are, it's, quite, it's quite likely that they will think, oh my God, is this happening again? Mm-hmm. So I think when we communicate, uh, it's important, like you said, to be very clear about what it is. The bottom line about this particular condition is it is a benign condition. It affects young children, uh, most commonly below the age of five, and it is self-limiting. It goes away on its own, and it has nothing to do with tomatoes. So, tomato fever is a uh, is it, it it is a term that occurred in somebody's head, and the name stuck. So, you know how it is when, and uh, the poor fellow who's serving uh, who's selling tomatoes are going to are going to suffer because. Uh, he's gonna, he or she is not gonna, you know, sell the fruit or vegetable because the public gonna say, oh, it's I, we heard there's a new fever in town. We don't want any tomatoes, and uh, we should really think of far-reaching consequences here. So, how it is uh, basically caused, and what are the major symptoms of this virus? Yeah, the name came because tomato has a red color and the skin uh, lesions or or spots have a red color. And these spots are tiny in, in terms of their size. So the child will develop uh, a red dots on the skin, and these dots will be about um, the size of a peppercorn or a piece of black pepper, if you will, something like that. Nothing more than that. Definitely not the size of uh, a tomato, as was mentioned in a Lancet article this week and that in fact right. stirred up a lot of controversy about this so the child will have these uh, lesions and they typically appear on the hands that is the white part of the hand we call it the palm of the hand and the soles of the feet so remember not many conditions uh, affecting the skin actually cause problems in these areas so it's quite distinctive to have uh, these red spots uh, on the on the white part of the hands and the feet. Specifically, technically, they're called the palms and soles uh, of, the, of the body. And these skin uh, dots also can occur in other parts of the body, like, like the trunk, uh, the other parts of the limbs, specifically the buttocks in, in smaller children. And that's because this is, a, this is a virus that spreads pretty much like the common cold. So children, very young children who are in daycare or in nursery or when they play together, they tend to come into contact with each other, and they aren't very good at, uh, you know, hand hygiene and keeping themselves uh, uh, germ-free like some adults are. So, if one of them has an infection, it's very easy for the virus to spread to the other child or to other children who share who share the same space. So, this virus can come through the secretions of the mouth, uh, of the nose, or even in stool. So, in very very young children who are cared for in daycare centers, diaper changes can, uh, if if proper hygiene techniques are not followed at diaper change, uh, the person who's doing it can actually, et cetera, these conditions can leave a scar, whereas uh, hand, foot, and mouth disease does not. Now, again, the 
technical term is hand, foot, and mouth disease because some of these individuals also get ulcers in their mouth. And these ulcers can uh, rarely be painful and cause some difficulty with swallowing. And in some cases, it can be severe enough to land a child in the hospital, uh, requiring some IV fluids, painkillers, uh, fever control, uh, that line of treatment. But specifically, only supportive treatment is required. Right, doctor. So as you said that it is highlighted in the Lancet and also by WHO. So what are the precautions to deal with the virus? Organisms. So uh, in, in, especially in a country like India where uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of people and uh, they tend to live in crowded, uh, relatively crowded conditions compared to the West. It's quite common for people to come into physical contact with each, with each other and uh, such infections can spread. And uh, in India, if you look at the experience, uh, the, this condition tends to be seasonal. It occurs uh, somewhere between May and July and it tapers down in August. So th that is the experience, at least from the published cases in India. Uh, any precaution that we follow. Uh, of course, the whole world now knows how to uh, protect oneself against uh, at least a respiratory virus. Uh, specifically for hand, foot and mouth disease, I'll encourage frequent hand washing. Uh, if you are working with children uh, in, for example, a, a, um, a play school or in a childcare facility or an LKG or UKG thereabouts, uh, frequent hand washing and uh, you can encourage children to follow hygienic habits you know but in that age group it's very it's not possible to ask or get mm -hmm. children to do certain things but uh, a foundation can be laid there and of course parents also can be educated about these things if a child at home is sick with this condition to perhaps you know keep that child at home rather than send the child to school because that child comes to the play school uh, everybody is going to get infected so uh, basic techniques like this a disinfection of uh, common used areas. For example, if there's a jet diaper change being done <clears throat> on a particular surface, that area has to be cleaned by protocol uh, using whatever cleaning agent that's officially recommended. So these are basic things that will go a long way in keeping infection rates down. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much for your time. I'm sure this information will surely help our audience. That's all for today. Stay safe. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.